Happy Sabbath, good people. And may the good Lord expand your territories and tents this Christmas season. May he give you more than your banners can hold. A story is recorded in the book of Elohim about a believer called Philip. One day Philip encountered a Gentile called Nathaniel. Then he declared in excitement that the prophecy made of the coming Messiah has been fulfilled and that the son of Elohim, the one on whose shoulders the government shall rest, is finally here. Excited by the news, Nathaniel asked Philip to reveal the identity of this Messiah. And without hesitation, Philip declared, his name is Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Baffled and underwhelmed by this news, Nathaniel asked Philip, can anything good come from Nazareth? You see, Nazareth was a slum, like Korogocho or Kibera. The elite saw it as a den of robbers, the home of chicken sellers, conmen and prostitutes, a place of no virtue and nothing good could breed in these contaminated grounds. And that is why Nathaniel, speaking innocently and truthfully, posed the question, can anything good come from Nazareth? They expected the Messiah to be a thoroughbred, a pedigree prince groomed in the ways of the world, but a slum dweller was never on the menu. And this is the silent but shocking question on the lips of the dynasties. To them, President William Ruto was bred in a slum somewhere north of Eldoret. That is why they have called him a thief. If he grew up in the den of robbers, there is no way he is not a thief. To them, Ruto is also a con man. There is no way a chicken seller could become president round one without some strokes of conmanship. Even the prayers were a con. The dynasties have it on good authority that God was not on his desk when they prayed. But is this the Sabbath truth? But how did the son of Elohim, a slum dweller from Nazareth, deal with the oligarchs who looked down on him because of his background? He simply ignored them. And occasionally he abused them, calling them hypocrites, whitewashed graves, and a bunch of vipers and snakes. Yes. Jesus was not a nice person sometimes. He abused people. And to achieve the purpose for which God gave a chicken seller the presidency, Ruto must embrace the virtues of being bad if he is a disciple of Christ. We say so because CNN projected a while ago that in 2032, Kenya will be the biggest economy in Africa. Nigeria has oil reserves, South Africa has minerals, and Egypt has everything. Yet, Kenya, with nothing, will become the biggest economy in Africa come 2032. This is not a promise, it is a scientific projection. And what is interesting here is that this projection coincides with the time when Ruto's 10-year term will expire in 2032. This means that destiny has appointed him to take us to this projection. But will he? We have an unpopular suggestion for him. You see, Jesus Christ was a dictator it was him or nothing. You were either with him or with the enemy. This is how he transformed the world. Similarly, it took 200 years to industrialize Britain, 160 years to industrialize USA, and 110 years to transform Japan. But it took only 35 years to industrialize China and 25 years to industrialize the Asian tigers. Why? China and the Asian tigers were dictatorships. And for Ruto to succeed and achieve the 2032 dream, a dose of soft dictatorship is healthy. But he does not have to tell anyone, not even the missus. He should not be obvious about it. But there is a small problem to the CNN projected dream of 2032. And this is because Kenya is at the inflection point. In mathematics, this is the highest point in a curve. And at this point, you can either go up or go down. And it all depends on leadership and choices. 
our choice is to become the leading economy in Africa by 2032. And the X factor here is leadership. We can choose to marinate in populism, which UDA is very good at, or we can take the path of bold decisions, which is unpopular with hustlers. And the son of Elohim knew this. When he proclaimed blessings to the slum dwellers of Nazareth, they sang back to him with chants of Hosanna, Hosanna. A week later, when he rebuked their sins, they shouted, crucify him, crucify him. But this man from Nazareth chose the bold path over the popular path. He chose the path of the cross. Instead of seeking permission from his followers, he served notice that he will liberate them in spite of themselves. Even the military strongmen of South Korea and Singapore did not ask their people to liberate themselves from the poverty that bound them. They just did it. Joseph Stalin did not seek the permission of the Russians to industrialize their country. He just did it. If Kenya is at an inflection point, where the choice is to go down or climb to the 2032 dream in the CNN projection, President Ruto does not have the luxury to ask Kenyans whether we want to go up or down. He should just do it. Instead of asking for permission, he should serve notice. History has taught us that change is not a product of dialogue. It is a product of force. And good leaders do not create consensus through dialogue. They create consensus through dominance. South Korea was at the same level as Kenya in 1963. And did you know that in 1963, South Korea borrowed $10,000 from Kenya to implement their vision? Yes, Kenya was a donor country helping other poor economies to develop. But in 50 years, South Korea is now a manufacturing country and Kenya is limping out of its shell as a banana republic. The question is why? And the answer is leadership. Singapore is another example. Compared to Kenya, Singapore is nothing. It is just a yard like Gikomba market, zero resources, zero expertise. It's just there, landmass without promise. In fact, at one point, and frustrated by this dead capital called Singapore, its leadership offered to mortgage the country to a neighbor. And after assessing this wasteland, the neighboring country declined the offer. True story. But today, Singapore is a first-class economy. How did this junk nation that looks like Shaori Moyo become a world-class economy? What happened? And how come China did the same thing and Malaysia did the same thing? Even Dubai is a desert. It is worse than the northern frontier of Kenya, yet they turned it into a super city. How did they do this? And the answer is leadership. President Ruto has finally formed a government that will lead us to the promise of 2032. But at the Fort Hall School of Government, we doubt that this is the team that will turn Kenya into a Singapore. And yes, President Ruto has what it takes to transform our Dubai deserts into international cities. He has the tenacity to drive our economy from where it is to become a South Korea. But he has no team for such a task, except David D. And that is the Sabbath truth. What good can come from Nazareth? And how shall we know that it is good? That is the question before us this Sabbath. We shall know that President Ruto is successful by how he deals with hustlers' expectations. And on this, he should borrow from Joseph Stalin. One day, Stalin called for a cabinet meeting at 7 a.m. Then he arrived with a live chicken and said nothing. He sat on his bossy chair and started to pluck the feathers of the chicken one by one. The chicken screamed in pain, but Stalin continued to pluck the feathers until the chicken was naked. Happy with the results, he released the chicken and got some maize from his pocket. Then he threw them at the naked chicken. 
and to the surprise of his cabinet, the chicken forgot its pain and started eating the maize from his hand. When Stalin got up, the chicken followed him wherever he went. Asked to explain this, he said this, this chicken represents the people. You can disempower them, brutalize them, and torture them. But if you give them peanuts in that desperate situation, they will follow you blindly. And this is what Ruto will do with the hustlers. In our view, this is a brilliant strategy. To become a Singapore, South Korea, Malaysia, and China, you must manage the masses. And the best way to do this is to use the politics of the rocking chair. Keep them busy with movement, take them nowhere. You must keep them hoping, but never satisfied. And this is what the Hustler Fund is about. It will keep expectant Kenyans busy, take them nowhere. Keep them hoping, never satisfied. And this is the way soft dictators keep the masses happy. If Stalin did it with the chicken, Ruto must do it with the hustlers. This is how he will contain them and make Kenya the leading economy by 2032.